to our view, our show that has been recently launched on Andy Shea TV, and we're happy to say that it's been doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Pujanju, for being here. Of course, it's I know a how pleasure. busy you were today with so many patients you had right before you come in, but thank you. I really appreciate it. Of course, it's a pleasure time. being with you. Hello, everyone. And uh, we're going to have an amazing show today. Totally, yes. We're having two nice guests today joining us. And the reason for us obviously talking in English, because one of our guests is American. So to be polite, for him to follow everything through, we speak in English. And the whole show would be in English. Our guests are Dustin Ferguson. He's a filmmaker. And Vida Gafari, who I had the pleasure having uh, Vida on the show in the past. Uh, she's a known, well, actress, a very active a journalist, very active in the Iranian-American community, more so in American community. And uh, we would like to welcome both of you. Thank you so much, okay. Susie June. Thank you so much, Doctor. It's such an honor to be on your show with the amazing Dustin. Yes, thank you so much, Miranda, here. It's definitely an honor. Sure. So you have sent me um, all of the clips and mm -hmm. your bios, and I'm reading and reading and reading, and I'm like, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. No, no, no. I'm really, really <laughs> impressed. So we're here for all of you guys who are with us to be impressed with all that well, both of you are doing, and um, you just won. Yes. yes. So let's talk about that. Huh? Absolutely. Why don't you tell us about your movie that it just won? Yeah. Some um, award. It's called Nemesis 5, and it's a sequel to the franchise that was created by Albert Pune, who's also known for Cyborg and Mean Guns. Mm -hmm. um, we just completed the film, and it's kind of in the festival uh, route right now. We won Best Director for Science Fiction, Best Actress, Best Actor, and wow. Best Science Fiction Film. Feels wow. good, huh? That's when you so win you the swept whole the whole category. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> How does it feel, Dustin, when you win? Gratifying. You know, I've been doing it for about 10 years, and that was actually my first award, so. Wow, that's it, even it better, was, huh? It was time. Deserving so, definitely. That's excellent. Why don't you tell us a little about the, you know, the movie that we just talked about that it won uh, sure, prizes, yeah. and then we, we have a quick clip to show to our viewers as well, so everyone can follow us and know what we're talking about. Yeah, definitely. Um, it takes place in the future. Um, it, we're like in a post-apocalyptic world at this point. Cyborgs and machines kind of run everything. Um, and so we have a heroine that's been trained under Sue Price, who was the star of 2, 3, and 4. And she's sent back in time to sort of change the events and the course of history to save mankind. And so the intentions No of, pressure. No pressure. <laughs> you know, she's just brought up, you know. Uh, yeah, and so it was a lot of fun to do, and the point of the film was to put it like a really nice cap on the series because it ended kind of on a cliffhanger with part four, mm -hmm. and they last did that one in 1996, so it was over 20 years ago. Wow. wow. So we kind of came back, and it, it worked because we were time traveling, so it didn't really matter when we made the movie now. Mm -hmm. We just had to set it in that time period. So True. it was a lot of fun to do, and it actually comes out to DVD, Blu-ray, and streaming this December. Fantastic. Awesome. And then it's going to continue going to other film festivals yes. around the world. You um, we have the Lucky right? Strike Film Festival coming up, and we have another one in October, it looks like. so. Cool. Busy, busy. Yes, trying to be. Okay. So what I was also noticing, mm -hmm. that had, uh, there was a lot of action movie and then thriller movies. Mm -hmm. And um, what thrills you about doing action and thr thriller movies versus... <laughs> <laughs> I love to be a... Drama, last crime. <laughs> My job. I'm the therapist here. I mean, it's exciting. <laughs> Obviously, you know, it's a safe excitement. You know, it's the same thrill you get from riding a roller coaster, but it, it's in, you know, the confines of your home. You know, your surroundings. You know, you don't have to really be afraid. It's a safe sort of afraid, mm -hmm. and I think that that's addictive. You know, yeah. um, especially as a filmmaker, I'm always trying to outdo myself and you know do something better than what I did last year. And I feel like that's that's where it's at you know I just really like that thrill it's what keeps me alive it makes me feel like I always want to keep doing this awesome. interesting so when you grew up in the era that you grew up what was it like were you more uh, drawn towards movies the one that you're making or then it kind of got changed as you became an adult and a movie maker yourself I'm, how did it work I kind of have a niche market the films I do are very similar to the ones of the 70s and 80s I take mm -hmm. a different approach to my filmmaking I don't have the frenzied editing or a lot of CGI that you see in the movies now I like suspense I like atmosphere I like character development so I take a different approach to my films I kind of want to keep that era of filmmaking alive I grew up watching horror films running from the video store from the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. That was my childhood. and mm -hmm. It's what I want to keep going. Not a lot of filmmakers do that now. Everyone wants the, the biggest, newest thing, the freshest thing. And I think there's a way to do that, but still 
pay respect to what we grew up loving. True. Very true, yeah. Okay, if you guys are ready, let's uh, take a look at the clip that we have, and then we will continue right back with you at our view. anxiety now. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You made me <laughs> to be, be sitting on the thriller just with one minute. Edge of our seats now. Awesome. So how long is the actual movie, Dustin? It's just over 70 minutes. I think it's like 72 minutes. I see. Okay. And any rating? I think the official rating is rating, it's rated R. I mean, there's some rated violence R. obviously. Okay, so. guys. So, you know, pay, pay definite attention to that. <laughs> Alrighty, so shall we move on to our, your other, because I know from reading your bio and the things that was sent to us, you did plenty. Yes. So um, let's talk about your other um, Yeah, actually I have a film that we started, well the production started a few months ago, we shot three scenes for it, it's called Robo Woman. Mm -hmm. And Vita actually has a part in it. Yes, I'm very side. excited. Mel Novak, which is going to be very exciting. Aki Aliong. Yes, uh, which is him on the card. Yes, yes. Yes. So we Brink Stevens. Brink Stevens. Uh, yep. Sue Aki. Price. It's a really great mm -hmm. cast. Mel Novak, who was in Bruce Lee's Game of Death, the lovely Donna Lee Heising plays the title role of Robo Woman, and she's an incredible actress. I've worked with her before in Dustin's films, and she was in Nemesis Five as well. So mm -hmm. it's wonderful. So is this role anything to do with Vita being Iranian or not really? Because some, that's something I want to discuss with you after. I wouldn't say so because she's a little twisted in this. So. <laughs> <laughs> but are you a twisted Iranian? Uh, uh, I, twisted you know, I think being? what I admire about Dustin is he doesn't really cast per type or per ethnicity. Uh -huh. And my name in this film is Hannah. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a little, my dad was a scientist. He was, you know, highly regarded mm -hmm. in the Persian community because our community regards academic people. And it's kind of like, I don't want to give too much away, but it's a little bit of a nod to my dad's. I play, I play like a very smart woman and there is a, I don't want to give too many too much away, but I collaborate with Mel Novak from Bruce Lee's Game of Death and he's like a highly regarded scientist. So I'm like a little scientific. I'm a, like a smart woman, a oh, smart that, that, that does woman. represent Persian women. Come on. Yeah, yeah but I but it's Hannah. Woman. It's not like it's Hedye. <laughs> <laughs> or I don't know, it's like a Persian name with an air haide, or you know what I mean? So it's I still have like a, a Western name. But yeah, it's like an, it's like a little bit of an homage, I guess, to my to my roots, but Dustin's an incredible filmmaker, and if I could just add a note here, he really does admire the 80s. He's like, a, it's a, a lot of throwbacks to the 80s. He, you know, he's a younger guy, but he really appreciates that era. You can see it in his videos, you can see it in his films. I've worked in his films before, and he really touches upon that stuff, and it's almost like he's a postmodern filmmaker because he takes stuff from the past and he makes it applicable to the present day, and what I love about him is he does so many different kinds of genres. He's always on it. You don't have to do a million takes because he just gets what he needs to get from, from people. So I think it's and he's easy a director to work with. He's a great director. He's a great young pro prolific director. I mean, any genre you want, this this man has imagined and created, <laughs> and most likely will create his own genre. So it's it's been a it's been a wild, wonderful ride with Dustin and a great ensemble of actors, and he's got a great team with him. So 
I'm I appreciate that. Of course, I'm so and I'm not saying it because you're sitting right here. <laughs> right. I'd say it because people like are so curious about you. Like at the Nollywood Awards, I remember someone said to me, "I thought he was going to be like a much older man because I looked at his, you know, all I'm his accomplishments." Yeah, I'm mean, still really young. It's like you know, someone said, "Oh, you know, I'm surprised he's not like 60." This guy, you know, you look at his IMDb page, you have to keep scrolling. So that's, that's, that's what I kept going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. I'm still interested into the twisted part. What's twisted about this? Or about her role? Um, but what she's assisting bring? Mel in giving our lead character some cybernetic upgrades. Essentially, it's about a woman that was attacked on her last day of work. She was assaulted by a group of men mm -hmm. and left for dead. And basically, they decided to do some pioneer new kind of surgery on her with cybernetic implants to help her save her life. But it ends up not really meshing well with the rest of her body, and she goes on a rampage to get revenge on all of the men. So... Vita plays Mel's daughter. He's sort of the mad scientist that gives her the parts. So she's like his assistant. I see. Yeah. So it's How like. How long did it take for the movie to be over and done with? Um, okay. Well, we shot know. three scenes are complete that we did a couple months ago when I had some actors in town. But we're not going to do the rest until November. It's going to be the eighth through the fifteenth. So we're going to do the whole thing in about a week. And it's going to take place in LA or suburb. Or yes. Or yes. All around LA. What do you think about the budgeting nowadays and the the expenses for filmmaking in LA? I know since a few years ago there's been a big Shift. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. shift that they were, they would move to other states. Yeah, to it's do, tough. Did it um, affect you by any? Look, it's interesting because I actually came here from Nebraska only about eight months ago. I did almost wow. all of my And he's done so much in this yeah. eight months. Most people, like, they wait to get settled for a time. But he just did he's right into it. Go, go. What else? Oh, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. I can't stop no matter how hard I try. Exactly. But no, I mean, I find a way anyway. You know, I did all that stuff in Nebraska. Here, it's exciting for me. This is, I'm in my element. I'm around like-minded people that do it the same way I do, and they want to get stuff done. And in Nebraska, I was the only one that was like that. You know, I'm mm -hmm. like, but come on, let's make five more movies this year. You know, and I can do that here. Right, so. the energy wasn't the same over there. Exactly. Yeah, I, really I thrive off that. of it here. I feel great. I love it here. One of the conversations that shows up for me whenever I go to the sci-fi movies is there. Is there any good future that comes out in these movies, or is it all, <laughs> we're all going to be it's doomed, <laughs> it's going to be looking really bad, there's going to be nuclear, and we're all, like, you know, acting like we were, it was hope. about 10,000 years ago, we're still I in the... It, I think it depends on which one of my movies you want to look at. <laughs> Nemesis 5, yes, humanity is renewed. I'm not going to give away the ending of Robo Woman, but it may not be the same. Okay. <laughs> so they love Robo Woman too, right? Right, That'll right. That'll be resolved. Yes, there you go. Okay. Then there was another movie that you, we have the link to show, The Antidote. Sure, yeah. Do you um, want to talk about that? So that we can go ahead and Definitely. show that too. I'm yeah, curious. Um, is that part of the old Amityville? Yeah, it's sort of a great big franchise that's been going mm -hmm. on for the last 30 years. Yeah. Um, I was hired by Wild Eye Releasing, actually, mm -hmm. to do the film. Um, I did a film in 2016 called The Amityville uh, Legacy, and they really liked it and wanted a sequel. So that's what this clip is we're about to see. It starred Mark Patton, who was the star of A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, the Freddy um, Krueger movie. Mm -hmm. And also had Helen Udi in it from um, Martha Quinn, Medicine Woman, and My Bloody Valentine, and had a whole bunch of people. Donna was in it as well. So. Yeah. You have a casting director, or do you do I do it almost all myself. Is that right? Wow. I do the editing, and I mean, like, everything. Do you okay. work about 23 hours a day? All the time. People think I don't sleep, but I still get bored. <laughs> I don't know what people are talking about. <laughs> so, okay, now that we talked about that, can we go please check that out, and we'll be right back. Awesome. estate sale went to auction houses and antique shops. It's evil, isn't it? It's more than just evil. It's, it's the vessel for which evil transfers between physical locations, spreading all over like, like a plague. Wow. 
Oh. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm Another, speechless. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting there. <laughs> it's really That's what I do. I freeze when I get afraid, and I'm just sitting there frozen. <laughs> well, um, I must admit, though, um, since childhood, movies in that caliber never attracted me. Maybe I'm being too much of a, I don't know, I'm... I'm into more of a romantic, romantic comedy. Uh -huh. You seem like a romantic <laughs> comedy kind of guy. Yeah, I you. gave it yeah, up yeah. on it. Yeah. Movies <laughs> like this, it's just like, I, I can't handle them. Like a right. few minutes as I was watching the, you know, the things that, um, links that were sent to me, I was like, oh my God, am I going to go through all this? But then they were so <laughs> short that by right. the time I decided to kind of get a little edgy. <laughs> we're both over. half Kashani and the stereotype is, yes. it's like, you know how they have stereotypes about Polish people in America? People from Kashan are really like nervous. <laughs> that's very they're very scared. They're big scaredy cats. And my mother's too. So we're, yeah. Oh, so, so there you go. Yeah. But see, as a filmmaker, that's good for me to hear. If exactly. you were like, that's I wasn't, you, it was fine, then I wouldn't have done my job. You want people to be yeah. that. Big. And you've got yeah. three that's big scaredy cats right here. But don't you also have a lot of teens and young adults going to these movies because I remember I could mm. tolerate it mm. when I was a teenager all the way up to about 18 I could tolerate that and then after that life happens yes and it's like scary <laughs> enough I can't handle too much more scary no stuff surprisingly happening. I'm the same way you know I don't put a lot of graphic gore in my films it's a thriller I, right yeah it's I can't watch that either I watch tv shows I'm like oh I can't believe they're showing that you know and I'm such a wuss with that. I like the suspense, and it's very, despite how the trailer makes it look, mm -hmm. it's very suspense based. But I remember Amityville, the, I, uh, oh. yeah, part, I've seen it before. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, it, at the minute the house came, it, it all kind of like right. a, a brings back, back, brought back <laughs> memories. Uh -huh. in all of, and that's why, why I was looking at the trailers, and I'm like, a lot of, um, there's this, like, whatever you, experience of darkness is, it shows up, and then it lightens it up. Right? Is mm -hmm. that how your yes, my right. experience of what you're you're yeah, doing exactly. is? Darkness is out. We don't have to talk about it. We have to see mm -hmm. it. It's here, and then there's hope. Exactly. Constantly. Yes, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I try to always inject it. that in there. Yes. <laughs> Tell us something that I, I'm curious to know. Every decade, every generation, they are more interested in certain area or film mm -hmm. or different things that they go through and watch and what have you. How do you compare the generation when you were growing up and your teens to the teens nowadays, the millennium? What is the difference? Do you think they still are as adamant to watch the same kind of a genre of a movie or has that changed from your perspective as a director? How do you see that really? I think that just like with life, it's a cycle. I think that, you know, about every 20 years it comes back. Mm -hmm. I just think it's, you know, like what we were into when we were younger is sort of what we rediscover again as adult mm -hmm. and learn to appreciate on a different level. So I think that it's always alive, it's just alive in a different way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's your take, Vida Jun, now working with Dustin and being in the movie industry? You know, I think younger people, and I sound like I'm such an old lady, but I think that like young millennials, because of the internet age, because of the social media age, they like mm -hmm. things that are fast. Mm -hmm. They like things to be quick. True. And um, I think you do a very good job because your movies are not too, too long. You know, I don't think young people can handle like hour and a half, two hour movies, <laughs> yeah. unless it's like an epic saga or, you know, with the romantic comedies that you so love. So oh, I think it's, sorry. I think it's different. I think it's the attention span. It's the attention span. And you really capture that in your films and might I add about Dustin he's a really big expert on films in another lifetime Dustin had an iconic video store yes I did yes yes <laughs> wow. I don't know if I should mention it but <laughs> this guy knows so much movie trivia and I think it was his destiny to take over these franchises and do them justice because nobody knows about movies like he does that's so very he's like a throwback. You know, he had he had the video store. Mm -hmm. It was very successful in Nebraska, and most of your movies have a homage to be it if it's Amityville or you mm -hmm. know. There's always some kind of an '80s milieu in his mm -hmm. films, That's so interesting. and he really captures that. And you know, all that stuff is in again with all the remakes that they're doing. So I think you are kind of like ahead of the curve because you're bringing this new genre that's like an older genre, but you're like livening it up for today. Because, you know, Albert mm -hmm. Pion was the guy that came up with Nemesis 5, and I believe he made Cyborg, very iconic filmmaker. And Dustin took over that, and it was like a seamless transition. It's like he mm -hmm. said, you can't tell that it's, you know, it's time traveling, that there was a continuum of time. Mm -hmm. Well, so, and, yeah, I mean, I think you nailed it, actually, like you said, with the video store, because growing up, 
renting films, you know, it was always my dream to open a video store. I actually went to college for that. Mm -hmm. And when I graduated in 2003, all of them were closing. They were going out yeah. of business. That's right. Isn't that a so, shame, though? Yeah. Ah. And so it's interesting because what ended up happening then is I just got a regular day job as a manager, and then I started doing films on the side. And then that led to me eventually opening a video store a couple years ago, and I was able to sell that and with the profits moved to California to do filmmaking full time. There we go. Kristen, um, and Vito, because you also brought this up, uh, what do you guys think about the gaming industry and how is that affecting the action movies? Because obviously there's a lot of action where the kids now from the age of maybe 8 or 10, they're constantly mm -hmm. part of this action and constantly it has a theme and they're involved in it. How has that changed uh, action films and producing and directing action films? I think they're very intertwined. It's all branded yes, now. Yes. It's, with social media, it's if it's Transformers, it doesn't matter if it's a movie, a cartoon, a video game. It's just the product. The mm -hmm. Or a Happy Meal, even. It's yeah. Like you said, it's it's complete branding. It's yeah. like a vertical branding or whatever they because call Because that's it. what people see on their social media as a brand. Yeah. You know, right, that's all right. that matters. That's what they're selling anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, the movies are very, almost in a way, temporary and throwaway. I mean, in two years, you don't remember the last big action movie because exactly. there's a different one. That's yeah. very true. You know, everything's very temporary. And Especially with the Marvel comic stuff coming mm -hmm. out. Yeah. You, like you said, you can't tell with, you know, Deadpool 1, there could be Deadpool 3 tomorrow. Right. So yeah. true. There's so many. You know. Has acting... Um, been different since now there's so much especially with this type of movies um, having technology be so much part of the actual movie has has your acting gotten affected or the way that the, you guys relate to each other as actors in there or is it more you and a screen and a blank screen versus you and another right. human being who's in the space how is that different a lot of grease green screening, a lot of mocap. Um, what I've noticed as an actor myself, and um, I've mentioned this before at length, is that um, there's a lot of new media. I think that's the most confounding thing because it's such a new territory, and I'm a member of the Screen Actors Guild. It's a guild, not a union. And they only have three people handling the new media department, and so many people are making new media projects. Dustin here just made a music video. So people, there's so much new media, nobody knows the rules, it's like the wild, wild west. Mm -hmm. And I think if it's the wild, wild west Good for point. me, it must certainly be the wild, wild west for you, Very right? Much so, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's an interesting way to yeah, look at it. It completely is, there's like no yeah. rules, you're out in the ether. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. what I've noticed more than everything, and I'm sure if it affects me, then it definitely affects me. I feel like you're kind of riding the wave all the time, you know, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. whatever's going on is what you're doing, especially now with how fast technology is progressing. True. You know, it's hard to keep up. I mean, for me to stay relevant, I have to see what's popular, then adapt it in my, right. my flavor, my mm -hmm. brand. Mm -hmm. And then that's what people, you know, choose to go after. I think that that's really all you can do now. You really have to rely on social media, Facebook, all of that. That's just where kids are. That's mm -hmm. true. In some, sorry, sorry. In some <laughs> level, it's so exciting to be riding the wave consistently. And I see that in mm -hmm. every aspect. I see that with um, the young population trying to figure out their career. They're just riding the wave. Mm -hmm. They have no idea. There's nothing else to hang on to mm -hmm. the way that they thought their, you know, their mother or their father did True. or the institutions and universities did. I see that in parenting, like parents are clueless because they're, you know, their mm -hmm. children are way ahead of them with and everything. They were at that age. They right. were at that age, or at, so I get it that every, like the whole world is going on the edge of nothing is um, like the one it was before. So it has an element of history in it. You can always learn a little bit from mm -hmm. the history, but all the other factors are so different. Mm -hmm. Um, in every aspect of life, which then it shows itself also in movies, because oh, yeah. that's the story of life that you pick up and, and portray. Um, what I was going to say, or ask you rather, Dustin, is the movies you make, what kind of a capture audience do you have in mind? Like what group, what age group rather, uh, would you think you would? I'm surprised, the... actually, with my audience, because... When I first started making films, I, it was very personal. I was actually not releasing them. I made them just to watch myself because I wanted to make a movie that I would like, how I would like it. Mm -hmm. And eventually enough people convinced me to show it to an audience and start selling copies and then that I grew see. into 60 films, you know. And so I never really aim anything at anybody specific. It's just sort of what I want to make and whoever likes it and finds out about it and mm -hmm. identifies with it mm -hmm. is what's important. So I have 
at the last convention I was at, I met an 11 year old kid that was a fan. He made a t shirt of the poster of one of my movies. Cool. And I was just like, You really know of me? You know, it was surprising. <laughs> and then I've had people, you know, that are 60, 70 years old that just get every movie that I release, and mm -hmm. it's really surprising. So you have a wide range of yeah. the age group that would. I think it just depends because I, I bounce around between comedy and documentaries yes. and horror. Lots of genres. And yes, again, I was just throwbacks to the yeah. 80s. You have a people lot know of... me for different things, yes. kind of in different areas. So. Yes. Yeah, a very creative. Person and uh, personality, right? Yes. I can't be any other way. Uh, so, what happens in your brain? Like, as you wake up in the morning, is it just like ideas? Yes. Pop? I mean, I wake up at 4 35 o'clock every morning. Wow. You know, and I, I immediately get to work. That's when I'm the most inspired. Mm -hmm. And then I get everything done and I relax later in the day. I go to bed at like 9. I'm so lame. <laughs> so, you're a <laughs> wow. Okay. Yes. Because I, I'm like super drowsy at that time. But then I get up and I'm really creative and I get a bunch done. You know, I'll release a trailer, I'll do some social media, I'll set up an interview. And then I feel like I've accomplished something that way. If I if my day's not like that, I feel like it's a waste. So, when we were at the Nolly Award Awards and, you know, you got your, your awards and it was like a full night affair like you must have been exhausted and because we had been filming also prior yes to that, you were so filming it was That's... madness as always yeah wow so <laughs> many movies so many work you have done that um, I just want to make sure we go and talk about them all and at least get a chance to show you a clip uh, the next one I want to talk about is the die sister yes can you um, tell us about that now die yeah. sister die mm -hmm. um, it's a remake of a uh, made-for-tv movie from the 70s this was my first film that had a budget. Mm -hmm. I had money and I could hire you know, a big actress, so I hired right. Brink Stevens. She's the star. This is actually probably her biggest um, character acting role to date. Mm -hmm. And she's been in over 100 films oh, since wow. the 70s. She's a big scream queen, yes. um, Slumber Party Massacre, like yeah. very iconic films. I've had the yeah. honor of working with her and I'm gonna work with her again. Yeah, and yeah. She's a true, true scream queen, like one of the originals. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah one of the biggest ones uh, you know, of that era. And mm -hmm. so we hired her, we flew her down to Nebraska, we shot the movie I think in four days. Wow. And yeah, it came out in 2013 as really my first, what I feel is my first proper feature film. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the clip. This is Amanda Price. She lives in this old house. And Amanda is afraid to die, sister, die. Don't be afraid, Amanda. You're not alone. There's father. There's daddy's little girl. Sister Meredith. Edward. Were you standing there the whole time? Brother Edward. In the last two years, Amanda has suffered from two heart attacks. They say the third time's a charm. And Esther, your companion. Hopefully, given some time, you can get to know me, and we can build a relationship built on trust. An understanding. Do you really want to know what Amanda fears behind the locked doors of this old house? What horrors lie hidden? What awful truth waits to be released? <laughs> Brother Edward, father, and Meredith know. And now Esther Harper is about to lift the dark veil and shrouds a shocking secret. Take a macabre journey through a world of madness and horror. This is all your fault, you slut, you whore. Jealousy and murder are the ingredients for pure spine-tingling terror in... <coughs> die, Sister, Die. From 42nd Street Films, this film is not rated. Wow. <laughs> They look petrified. Dies. <laughs> Dies. <Okay. laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> hey, sister. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, tell us about the, the story. The, the... Um, okay, well, in the original film, it's about a rich brother and sister that were left in inheritance, and essentially the sister has everything, mm -hmm. but she's suicidal. And so um, the brother's constantly trying to find ways to get her to kill herself so that he can get her inheritance. I see. <laughs> but, a good brother. Huh? Yeah. It was definitely more of a drama, you know, it was made for television. So we wanted to turn it into more of a horror film. So the element we changed was they were trying to scare her to death in this because she's prone to have heart attacks. Uh -huh. So it allowed for a lot of fun setups where it would get spooky in her house all of a sudden and something would happen to try and scare her. Right. And so that's essentially the plot of the film is we go throughout it following her as she lives in this mansion. Um, her housekeeper is sort of buddying up with her brother who may be conspiring against right. her. So it's very much a mystery thriller. It's very PG. I don't even think there's anything vulgar in it really other than what you saw in the trailer. So I love the line, the third time's a charm. It's like, wow. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Spiteful man. 
That's happened a few times. Uh, so. Oh, wow. Well. Okay, now before we go to your music video that you did, um, I want to get more about your upcoming projects. Sure. The one that you mentioned briefly yeah. with uh, Vita being uh -huh. there and any others that are coming up. Yeah, uh, let me just run through them real briefly here. Obviously, there's Robo Woman that we're going to be doing in mm -hmm. November. Um, there's a movie called Runaway Nightmare that Vita will have a part in as well. Wow. We're excited nice. about that one. It's a very, it's very it's clever. Yes. yes, and it's very clever, but I don't want to really reveal it, but it's a very clever film, and it's a very clever part in the film, so I'm very flattered. So, Kind of like an homage to the 80s, that 19. segment. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Without giving anything else away. Yeah, it's essentially, um, we're presenting it like it's an old recording of a television program from the 80s. So we're making fake commercials. They'll go to like commercial breaks. It's shot in full screen. Everything's from the 80s. Everything you'll see in the movie. Mm -hmm. And so she's going to be um, in the psychic commercial, the fake psychic commercial. <laughs> yeah. So that'll be a lot of fun. With the 1-800. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it'll, be so, it'll be a lot of camp. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. And then um, we are currently just wrapping up. Um, I was the director of photography on What an Institution, the story of Police Academy. It's a mm -hmm. documentary on the entire franchise of the Police Academy. Oh, that films. would be wow. interesting. Yeah, we just actually finished that up. We did uh, close to 50 interviews, I want to say. I mean, there's eight films and, you know, um, cartoon series and a TV series. And there's a lot of people involved, cast and crew. So we did all those interviews over in Burbank. Mm -hmm. and at the same time, I was the co-director, actually, on another documentary. Mm -hmm which oh. is this uh, Night of the Demons documentary that we did. Mm. This is which sort of a screenshot. It's called The Party's Just Begun, The Legacy of Night of the Demons. Oh. The so, Devil's Food? Yeah, it's a quote from the film. <laughs> 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 so we did this kind of simultaneously because we have the studio space. So we were doing interviews for this franchise at the same time. So it was crazy. It was 14 days, um, almost 12 hours a day doing interviews. Wow. And so uh, both of them will be out next summer to DVD, and they'll have clips of the films and interviews with everybody. It's, it was a lot of fun to do and very much I an bet. honor to be a part of. Anything with fun. Halloween coming up? Yeah. That I this mean, this, that's this, this actually, yeah, this like Runaway it. Nightmare we're doing actually, we're racing to release for free on Halloween. Oh, we're going to shoot oh, it here in a couple okay. weeks, and then, yeah, we're, I'm going to put it all together. We'll put it online on YouTube. So just follow me on Facebook to find that. Yeah. Beautiful. That's wonderful. And what genres are you comfortable in uh, playing and choosing? Uh, you know, I my background was comedy, but, you know, I, I love horror because women in horror are very powerful. There's even a Women in Horror Month in February. <laughs> February. Yeah. So there's all these things for women in horror, but I've done drama, I've done comedy. It's funny, when I started out, I did a lot of the stereotypical Persian roles, so I called myself <laughs> a hijab actress <laughs> and I think most Middle Eastern girls they've been in that boat but I'm very grateful that I you know I guess I'm a I'm a multi-ethnic or that's what they call it, ethnically ambiguous uh, <laughs> character actress so I feel like I've, I'm very blessed that I mm -hmm. just don't have to play the hijab roles I can be like a smart conniving woman in his movies or twisted psychic mm -hmm. hotline lady or yeah, like yeah. you know I there was a very funny campy movie he made called uh, Horn Dogs Beach Party which was like an homage to <laughs> Porky's but believe me it's not as raunchy as it sounds and it had Brink Stevens again the yes. lovely Donnelly Heising and Troy Froman who's a is an icon in his own right. He was in Saved by the Bell. He was reoccurring yes. in that series, and that's some big 1980s series. Return of the Living Dead too. Which and Return of the Living exactly. Yeah. So you know, you really bring that element to it. So um, I guess with Dustin, I'm like a postmodern horror sci-fi uh, actress. But I just shot another film called Abeyance, and that was like a thriller as well. That was mm -hmm. a sci-fi thriller as well, and that you know that had a great. Uh, cast and crew, but I feel like I'm, you know, as I'm getting more seasoned with life, I'm delving into different material, different ethnicities. Mm -hmm. It's it's quite wonderful, and it's I think it's the testament to having a, a young director mm -hmm. and writer who, you know, I think you have a colorblind casting. You know, you never mm -hmm. you never go for the the stereotypical tropes. Um, That's in, nice. in your film. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's bloody, it's gory, but not that bloody. It's futuristic, it's scary. But it's always fun. It's always fun, and there's, there's always not the like, fun in there. you know, like the Asian character is not the dry cleaner, or, you know, the Middle yeah. Eastern woman isn't like fleeing her village. So, right. I think. Specifically, my leads. So. Yeah, and you don't have that in, in his films. And yeah, Dinah Lee Heising is of Asian descent. Well, a lot of things, but mostly Asian descent. And how many times is like an Asian lady. I think all of the actresses in Horn Dog Speech Party were. were Different ethnicities, yeah. yeah like Diane one. was like what Romanian or something, yep. and the, uh, there was a Chinese actress, but she yeah. wasn't like a meek Chinese woman. There was another Middle Eastern actress. It was vi you're right, your films, and I I mentioned that to Joe. I was like, you know, I'm really impressed. Like the Asian wasn't like the little ex exchange student. You know, she yeah, was no, like she a, was the very powerful go get what she wants kind of. She thing. was the lead, yeah. so yeah. But so that's you, very 
um, unique, mm -hmm. uh, Dustin, that you do that mm -hmm. because a yes. lot of uh, directors uh, go for that um, ethnicity. They want to fit know, the mold. Fit the mold. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's and I've never done that. And very interesting. It, the approach of my films from every aspect have never fit a mold. I go by my the beat of my own drum for sure. No See? Chinese person would ever work in a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> like it's yeah. not it's not your <laughs> It'd thing. It'd be all Americans. And <laughs> yeah, they'd do yeah, different. exactly, exactly. So is it that you uh, you have the role but not an ethnicity attached to the role? You have the role and then uh, when the cast is there, you look for something within that person. It's interesting, actually. Like she said, I am, in a, in a weird way, I kind of feel like I'm colorblind because what I end up going for is the people that I trust and that I've worked with in the past mm -hmm. that have worked their way with me. Mm -hmm. it, you'll notice throughout, you know, you do a lot of films, you're going to go through a lot of people. Right. So you kind of find a select group of people that are reoccurring in a lot of the films. And I just, I write parts for the people that I want to be in the film. And it's like you have your own ensemble. It's like mm -hmm. the old studio days where they had the actors that they would use. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember what the, what the phrasing of that no, was. No, you're writing an ensemble cast. It's like an ensemble yeah. cast and it's like, you know, the studios would have their own certain system. Right. It's kind of like an homage to like the 70s directors that would have their own, you know, cast all mapped out. So it's, it's very cool that he does that. So why 70s and 80s? Were you I, even I born feel like then? No. Uh. I was, to give away my age, I was born in 82. Okay. Shh, okay. No, you're really born in like 1990. People think I was. Um, no, I mean, and I grew up, like I said, in that era, you know, I was never a fan of the, the fast pace, you know, stuff that keeps your attention that they do now. I think, I can't even pay attention. I don't know what's going on when I'm watching that. I need something that builds and gives you depth. And like we talked about before, there's not a lot of directors that really do that anymore. And I'm not even really intentionally trying to do that. It's just what I enjoy, and it's just what naturally... It's just who you are. Yeah, it's just, just how the films are that I make, out I guess. That way. Over time, it's become that. When you decided to become a filmmaker, um, first of all, did you do any acting yourself? I've acted in my first films, you yes. You did, you did voiceover in your films. I do voiceovers often, yeah. yes. I like doing that. It's fun. Now you do that, too. Yes, yeah. I do that, too. I do that, too. That's the only thing I haven't done for Dustin yet. So. No, yeah. Here you go. Oh, yeah, I, I love, love it. it. Did you hear that, Dustin? Yes. He said, he said it all. Poor <laughs> Dustin. Like, he's not under enough pressure making, like, 80 movies a year. Yeah, <laughs> eventually, it'll obviously happen at some point. So then you became a director, and you stick with it, and you don't want to go back to acting, I take it, or not yeah. necessarily. So I mean, I do it once in a while, you know, just for little cameos and right, stuff like right. that. I like doing that's fun, but uh -huh. I don't, I'm very much on the other side of the camera. I see. You I like, like, I like to call the, the shots. Scene. Yes, yes. Yeah. And you're editing it too. It's like, how, yeah. how, like how so many I have to have control because I know how I'm going to yeah. put it together later, so I just mm -hmm. need that to be in that element. Did you have any director in mind as you were growing up as a kid that you watched their movie mostly or you could see yourself, envision yourself as you got older and you became a movie director yourself to kind of follow their steps somehow and, and idealize with them? Anyone? Yeah, I think very much it was part actually of being in that era because the films sort of that were coming out then were low budget. Those were the first low budget films like right. the Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Halloween. Mm -hmm. They were done on like $100,000, which was nothing, mm -hmm. you know, at the time. And that sort of inspired me, you know, to think about these people still made it. They weren't in Hollywood. They still just did what they could do with right. what they had available and they made something. And a movie like Halloween and Texas Chainsaw was made on nothing are the most iconic films of right. the genre. True. You know, because they're, they have to infuse creativity and find ways to pull it off mm -hmm. without the money. Mm -hmm. And so that to me has always been my inspiration. You know, when you're doing this much, you don't always have the biggest budgets. Mm -hmm. You know, so you find creative ways to still pull it off and make it something that you really enjoy doing. In a limited time period, because yeah. your locations, it's not like you, it's like through a big studio. He's well, we shot Horn Dogs in two days. Yes. In I don't know how we did it. I guess when you don't have a big, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, we have uh, our cast, we have our one couple locations. You yes, can do you got to do it. I mean, that's how he moves fast and yeah. good and, 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 you know, very well oiled machine. So very, very well done. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I heard you were going away for a weekend for something coming up. This is San Fernando Comic Con. Yes, the convention. There we go. A little yeah, birdie told weekend. me that. Yes, <laughs> before the show. Yeah, it's this Sunday, actually. It's the San Fernando Valley Comic Book Convention. I'll be there um, with Sue Price, actually, from the Nemesis Films, mm -hmm. and my buddy Alan Maxson, who was King Ghidorah in the newest Godzilla film. So we'll kind of be sharing a little space there. We'll have DVDs, posters, all kinds of stuff for sale. There so. you go, everyone. I think yeah. that... Come uh, out and see us, for sure. Yeah, it would be fun. Come over and yeah. see. Yeah, 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 I guess that would be, be great. fun for people who enjoy this type of yeah, event. Definitely. And very local. Yes. So yeah. you can't San beat that. Yeah. 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 You want to see the uh, music video? Absolutely. I wanted to uh, ask Dustin to tell us a little about it. Sure. So we get people excited. So we look forward <laughs> to seeing that music video yeah. that you made. 
it's interesting, you know, like I said, I'm a creative person. I don't like to just pigeon my whole self in like making movies, mm -hmm. you know, exclusively. So I've done music for a couple of years now. I think 2015 was the first thing I did. Uh, German electro artist e-rocker, um, Stefan Stallman, um, is the producer of this music. Essentially, he makes the beats and I write the lyrics and record the vocals. And so we're collaborating over the internet from here in Germany. Mm -hmm. And so we had our second EP together called Hollywood Rock, actually, and I do have a little ad for it here. And do you speak is, German, Dustin? I'm trying to learn all different languages now that okay, I'm here. So I can yeah. Are yeah. you of Germanic heritage? Uh, and Scottish. Oh, I can see that, Irish. yeah. Yes, yes. Scotch, Irish. Um, so yes, Hollywood Rock is the name of it. It just came out. The video we're about okay. to see is the first single called Beat by Beat. Um, we filmed that just basically around where I live, just kind of showing off the Hollywood life that I have now. It's kind of the, what the song's about. And then we have a second single called Midnight Dancer. We just shot a video for it that comes out Friday. So. Interesting. How long does it take you to do a music video? We shot it one night, edited it the next day. I mean, yeah, I, know I know what I want. Do everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, I spend any more time. Very clear. I don't even have a to-do <laughs> list because it all gets to done. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty Very much. well. Okay, yeah. let's go take a look at the music video by Dustin. I like wow. the bee suit looking up. Yeah, <laughs> that was fun. So that was a music video done by Dustin Ferguson um, yeah. just a couple of weeks ago that yes. uh, we saw. And you said once in a while you get the chance of urge. working, uh, an, an urge rather, <laughs> yes. uh, or a chance to work with uh, songwriters and or yeah. singers to do that. And this one was from Germany, you said? Yeah, it's interesting. I kind of develop a different relationship with different artists because I need music often in my films. And so I met mm -hmm. E-Rocker when I was looking for music in a film I did in 2014 called Cheerleader Camp to the Death. And so what I've been doing is like a trade. I'll direct a music video for them, and then I get a song in my film. So that's actually how I met him, and we started collaborating together. Interesting. Smart yeah, person. You very, very I mean, we are going to help each other, you know? We're in this yeah. together. It's so. like a collective. It yes. is, very yeah. much, very much. A great yeah. collaboration between our artists, yeah. and thanks to the social media. Yes. Uh, and we all get exposure connected. for each other, you know, on our different yeah. media yeah. platforms. Yeah, one way, hand so. feeds the other. Exactly. But it also expands you, I, I see, because you're not only stuck in one space. It, it, you know, putting yourself in all of these expands you creatively. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, and that song's personal, played at German yeah. clubs now, you know, so I'm heard there. I so mean, your music career is taking off, yeah. and you didn't even intend that to happen. No, no, it was always for fun. For fun, so. <laughs> yeah. But I think maybe people can see the fun. It's the same yeah. with the movies, though. That's why I do it, you know, yeah. because it's mm -hmm. fun. And this is like an 80s throwback stuff, too. Obviously, yeah it's, like, yeah. it's like beatbox music, breakdance music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. 80s music I really liked. Me, Me too. too. Yeah. I actually moved to 70s LA 80s. And 80s. Oh, really? Oh, nice. Yeah. Me too. One year before you were born, I actually moved to LA. Yeah, 84. I came when you to guys LA. were in, oh, the, cool. in your, just fresh out of your that mom's been rooms, right? Oh, how sweet. <laughs> That's very nice. We're <laughs> ageless, ladies. Ageless, darling. A big compliment. <laughs> yes, yes. I've worked so hard for every year that I'm, I'm going to number them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's very true. Well, uh, mid 80s is when I came to LA mm -hmm. uh, from England. Mm. And then the 70s is where I grew up in England, and I loved the music wow. in that era. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. in Arizona in the 70s. 
Is that right? Yeah, I went to Scottsdale and Tempe in Arizona. I went to ASU. Wow, sounds like fun. Nice. I bet Dustin would have loved to be in LA during the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. If we had amazing. discos. Discos. Oh yeah, I know. Nice we had club. disco, nice clubs. Yes, wow. they were really that was cool. With the with the actual defining disco times. Ball. Then. Yeah, now it's like, what is LA now? Like a bunch of wine bars and tanning <laughs> salons and you know hipster like, bars. Yeah, yeah. And like it's dry bar, changed. hair salon. I mean, yeah. it's not it's not like that. Now it was like a it seems like a golden era of the eighties. There you That's go. Great. There's and another he, business for you. I know. Now I gotta go open a club. <laughs> and he's and you know and I think you really infuse that in your work is yeah. that you're you're like going back to that golden era it's I think just it was who a, I am so it bleeds into everything it's I a do. simpler time you know there was no social media mm -hmm. there was none of the tarot I mean I love social media but and actors never have cell phones in my movies on purpose yes. I make them timeless for That's that reason it. they just don't exist so if something's happening you can't be like oh my phone doesn't work yeah they, there just aren't phones in my mm -hmm. world okay good it's That's timeless that good, way. It, yeah. is, yeah. it is it is it's a great work ethic yeah perfect yeah it's beautiful yes. Um, I've, I've experienced like within one hour, I've gone through so many <laughs> genres and back, and uh, it's uh, it's a rich experience in a very short time. I hear that often. Thank you. Yeah. So where do you vision yourself, Dustin, in five years from today? I can't and say so because I can a year catch ago. You when we do another interview, yeah. five years, I say, well, Dustin, this is not what you said. I always have plans, but you know, I mean, a year ago, I was working at a video store, and I thought that was my future. Mm -hmm. And here I am in on Nebraska. TV. Yeah, in Nebraska. Like, so. I don't know. I mean, ideally, I want to keep moving up. I want to be as big of a director as I can be. I want to be happy in life and fulfilled. I think that's what everybody wants. That's as true. long as I'm doing what makes me happy, then that's all I need. You need to make a romantic comedy for Susan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There you go. <laughs> You'll probably write one tonight. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you got to play in it because originally you sure. did comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to be the nosy neighbor lady with a moo moo and the curls. <laughs> so that's like my dream. So I can eat all the craft services. It's going to happen now. And I can be that. the therapist yeah. in there. there yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I just play one role in yeah. the therapist. Yeah, you have a big cast now. There yeah, we go. If you join me in well. Movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can be your ensemble. That'd be great. It saves me the trouble. That's wonderful. Well, one last thing I want to ask. Oh, before you, guys, you say that, you already did your casting, so it's done. It's done. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, yeah. but there's yeah. many more to come. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. That's okay. <laughs> what I wanted to say is I talk to a lot of people here in L.A., young, whatever, especially millennials, and they say, maybe they're being spoiled, but they tell me, like, life in L.A. is too hectic. We want to go somewhere that is nice, relaxed, and less Nebraska. traffic. Let yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. And they want to go to other states. And yet, you came from a state that it was more, mm -hmm. I guess, civilized, more relaxed and laid back here, and you seem very happy. Yeah, I mean, Explain I was always... Explain that to me, please. I'm confused with <laughs> young people. I don't know. I, it, I didn't, like I said, I didn't foresee it, really. I think it just all sort of clicked that way. When I was in Nebraska, I was very much the black sheep, you know. I was the one doing all the films, doing circles, you know, in mm -hmm. that place. And I needed to, I felt like I wasn't making progress. I needed to be in, a, in my space where I was around like-minded people that had the same sort of goals. And I didn't even pay attention to like the hustle and bustle of the city as much as I did. This is where films happen. Right. This is where True. I feel right. You know, and so I just, I fell right into it. Like, I remember when the first time we were in Hollywood, you're like, are you scared? Yeah. Isn't it scary here? And I'm just like, kind of. <laughs> and now I love it. You know, I love it mm -hmm. here. You it's feel great. right at home. Yeah, I you, were, right you were like observing everything. Yeah, I was and taking it in. Yeah, yeah. And he, you are an observer. You're a filmmaker. So I think yeah. you're like the ultimate observer. And I think you probably know like the locations of everything because you're so ensconced yeah. in film, right? Definitely. But LA also grows on you. It does. Like yes, I think everybody gets a little bit intimidated when they come. It's like New York. You get very intimidated and then... When you've driven on the main yeah. roads enough times and you it's see It's very the same vast. Yeah. There's a lot to see. So, yeah. And it's do. also changed over the past 30 years. LA is oh, no yes, longer the LA it used to be. I mean, everywhere in the world has changed. Mm -hmm. New York, too. But uh, LA used to be a lot more laid back compared to New York and Manhattan in mm -hmm. particular. Mm -hmm. Now, I think we're kind of running... Mm. Parallel. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's nice to have you in LA, Thank both you so of you. Much. Yeah. Were you born here? I was born and raised um, on the East Coast mm -hmm. from the DC, Maryland area. There's a very good Persian community there, but there's not much of a film community. They're all True. political people, oh, or yeah. there are True. lawyers, or think tank people. So I really enjoy it here too, but it's a, it's very vast where i'm from everything even though it's a you know the nation's capital everything is very small yeah. here's like different. the vastness one can get lost in the vastness but well, you didn't 
Yeah. I, have, I, I took to it. It's yes. been a pleasure having you guys. Our time is up, unfortunately. We had a fun time with you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank really you did. so much. Yeah. We wish you all the very best. Thanks Thank again you. for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. See you much. soon after the uh, nominations for... I hope so. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, thank you. Of course. I said it. I claimed <laughs> thank it. Thank you, Doctor. They're going to have the Oscars. I'm going to hold it to you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.